Another setting that we need to fix for the walkthrough is if I just type the word infer in here, um, is the infer link hub. We need to set this to no. It is set to n, yes. So we need to set that to no and say that that uh, setting is not is partially implemented at the moment in the ELT pattern. It is fully implemented in our SSIS pattern and will be implemented, um, completely implemented in the, in the next upcoming release. So for now, just set that to no and we're good to go. Okay, let's have a look at um, how we would start doing some data vault modeling here. So if you haven't been following along and it's the first video you watch, let's just go ahead and click the load sample data, metadata, and do the after import um, snapshot here. Um, even if you followed along, let's let's do this again so we're all baselined and on the same set here. So before we start with the data vault modeling, we want to just go and I just want to take you through a couple of the settings that we need to make sure is set. They are set, but let's just go through them just so you're aware of it. So it's the hashing setting here. The first one is the hash algorithm. We support a number of them, MD5, uh, SHA-1, SHA-256, and 512, but we're going to leave this as SHA-1 for now. Then the next thing we're going to check is just hash binary. And we allow you the ability to do a binary hash or a text hash, but we're going to leave this at binary. And then we have the SQL compatible row hash and um, compatible um, hashing. This What this is used for um, in our earlier versions of Pimmel Flex, um, our SSIS components created a hash that was um, not the same as the hash bytes function or the, um, the SHA-1 functions from Snowflake. And what we've since done is we've refactored those uh, components there. So by default, these are now set to yes, um, just so you're aware that there are in a different kind of hash compatibility, but um, you want to check that these are set to yes there. The next thing we want to look at is um, you, we also have something called, um, and I'm just going to type the word link in here. Um, we also have the ability for you to accelerate link satellites or link effective, effective satellites. Lights. So this is set to no at the moment, and we're going to leave it at no, but you can switch this on to yes um, later on if you want to do link satellites and things like that, right? So just bear in mind that there are additional settings in Data Vault here um, that you can use and, and set, and these are covered in more greater detail in our sort of Data Vault specific um, videos here that, that goes into detail of all of these settings and how they affect them. But for now, we're just going to leave the default settings and configurations. Let's, let's look at um, data vault modeling and acceleration in Bimoflex. Uh, this is really where Bimoflex comes into its own. One of the th key things you want to do um, when building a data vault is obviously you want to do your target model. You want to design your target model. Once you've designed your target model, you need to um, be able to take any source that you've imported and map the source to the target. Now, what Bimoflex does is it runs some heuristics and based on your metadata for the source, it'll forward engineer um, a data vault for you. So to give you an example of what that means, let's have a look at sales or the header. So I'll just click on sales or the header here, and I'm just going to go and uh, refresh that. And I'm going to jump this back here, and I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit here. Actually, I'm going to go back um, first, and I'm going to go and say, um, the first thing that I'm looking at sales or the header here is it'll create a hub with three links over here. But let's just have a look at sales or the header, the hub itself. Let's just say that in our target model, we've decided, and by the way, you can change the this hub underscore, you can rename that to H underscore or whatever um, part of this you want. Okay, so there's a there's, there's naming templates that you can use. We're not going to cover it in this walkthrough. But let's just look at sales or the header here. Let's just say in my target model, I don't have a sales or the header. I actually decided I want to call this sales order. All we need to do here is go to the source table, edit table, and we have this model override name here. And think about that as your business name. You you have that on columns and on objects, and you can give it a, a business name. So if if my target hub was called sales order instead of sales order header, I'll rename it over here. I click save. Now I have the hub sales order and you'll see everything else is, 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 is done as, uh, accordingly. The next thing you want to do um, in Data Vault is effectively go and analyze your links and decide whether they are a single unit of work or a natural business relationship and um, decide on whether they should be combined or, or separated. Now, we've, again, we've, we've gone ahead and, and, and tried to work with and see what the easiest option is for a data monitor to do this. 
And if you want to combine these two links into a single unit of work, just grab it, drop it on top of that, and rename it, giving it a new unit of work name there, and boom, there we go. So now we've just combined our links, and if I wanted to bring the third one in, it retains the name, bring it in. So now that's how easy it was to bring the sales order and, and create a single unit of work. If we, however, realize that this build to address actually is not part of the unit of work, it's a separate link, again, we can just split that out into its own separate um, satellite there, uh, link there, and it's split out there. Um, I'm going to leave that though combined, so we leave that there. So what you want to have when you're done with your sales order header model is it needs to look like this. Now, again, Bimoflex was designed for us to incrementally build up our data vault, and we can bring that in um, in little bits and pieces. So I'm, you know, you can review this, you can print this out. But um, I'm going to go ahead and now look at my sales order detail. And again, I'm going to go through the same exercise here where actually I'm not going to call it sales order detail because we're bringing multiple systems in. And when we did our target model, we decided that we're going to call sales order detail sales order line. I'll rename that first. So as you can see here, I've now got my hub sales order line, my link here. And I've got two links here. And again, I want to probably go and say, well, you know what? This is one link. So I'm going to go and drag this on the top of that one. Um, and I'm just going to call the sales order line. Okay. So when I'm done with my sales order line, this is what I want it to look like, right? So you just do that. We know there's other um, things we can do, but for now, I'm just going to leave it at that. So that's how we've just covered off combining unit links into unit of works. All right, another thing that we want to do when we do data world is we want to analyze, um, you know, our source systems here and possibly have a, and for here, I'm going to go and switch on my show columns here because I'm going to do some, a little bit more modeling on my source columns here and I'll zoom in here so we can see what we're doing here. So this is just my customer hub satellite. And what I want to do here is I want, I'm, I'm analyzing this and I'm going, right, these two columns here, passwords, hash and set. Um, I've determined that those are fast changing attributes and I want to split them out into their own satellite. So I'm just going to go and select both of them by pressing control and selecting them. And they say split. And I'm going to call this satellite password. Okay. And great. And there it is. I'm going to just drag that out there. You can hit the refresh button at the top here, but I'm just going to drag it out. So now I have split my satellite into two. Um, and then I may look at this um, rogue grid over here. And, and saying, well, this uh, let's just say this column here. Actually, I don't want this, so I want to exclude this column in my, in my data vault. So I go and exclude that column there. So now it's no longer in my data vault. It'll still be extracted from source to staging, but it won't be in my data vault. And that's how very easy it is to actually exclude columns um, that you don't want to model yet or leave them out, and where you want to go ahead and, and do some sort of satellite splitting there. Okay, another thing that we want to do is po quite possibly when you are integrating many different systems, um, you will quite often have a situation where you will have some attributes that are common across all your systems or should be common. So if I'm looking at my customer table here, I'm going to look at go and say, well, you know, I've got my, um, let's just say my company name, salesperson, email address, phone, um, and modified date because these are very specific for this system and maybe even name style, right? Um, those the, the, that that over there um, is going to need to be in a separate set satellite here. I'm going to just call this details. Um, and what will happen here is I'll split that into a third satellite for me, right? Um, and I'm just going to grab this over here and this one there, so I can see this. And this satellite over here is going to be common. In other words, this is going to be, um, and I may even want to put this satellite this this just this uh, name in here into what's called a bag of keys so i can go and say well this is a bag of keys um there's this concept of bag of keys satellite there so i'll have that over there so effectively a bag of keys is where all the you know source keys are going to be in so the last one i want to do over here is look at this and go and say well you know i've got um title first name middle name last name and suffix and these are going to be across all of my systems in other words what i have here is i have satellites that are very specific to the source that it comes in from because this metadata here or this um, data here is going to be you know it doesn't it may, it may only exist in this one source and you can decide you can exclude this entire satellite if you want 
But this satellite over here is common. It's going to be across all my sources. So instead of having the, this based on a record source, I want this to be integrated from all my sources. So I can go and say remove the record source. So now I have just the customer satellite here. And if I zoom in here, you'll see, or go out here, you'll see that I now have a customer satellite. I have a password satellite here, and I'll zoom in in a second. I have a bag of keys satellite, and I have a detail satellite there. Okay, so that's how easy it is to do that about uh, splitting satellites in, the, in Umal Flex is just to split that out. All right, so those are um, basically the only things that we're going to touch on in this walkthrough here. Um, we will cover off... Um, in our training, um, all the other um, data world aspects are covered off multi-active keys, you know, um, transaction links, and, and, and everything else that you want to save as links, hierarchy links, um, is all covered off in, in separate sections of our, our training. But for the walkthrough, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to split out the customer satellite for now, and we're good to go. Now, one of the things to, to note about um, Bimbo Flex is that it is built to be incremental. So if I were to hit, so what I've done now is I've done some source modeling and I've looked at the source and I've now mapped it to my target model or my target state. But this is all logical modeling. There's no, there's, think about this as logical modeling. Behind the scenes, Bimbo Flex has tracked every single, um, has put in place, uh, you know, uh, heuristics to know that which column goes to which satellite and which keys are used to bring make up all of these keys so all of that information is all tracked um, within our sort of metadata system but it's all logical at the moment there is no physical tables here so if i go back to my objects here you'll see that there's no data vault data tables here just yet because all i'm doing now is in a previous state or a logical modeling state if i'm happy with my model and again i can go in here and combine you know, bring as much or as little of this in as I want. If I hit the publish button, it will only publish this logical model into a physical state, right? So you can, that's where you can actually go and, you know, incrementally add your data vault. So you may have a hundred source tables that you want to model, but in scope, you may only have three or four core business concepts. Well, you can model those three or four core business, core business concepts, publish those and get all the ETL for it. But for the walkthrough, we're going to just go and select all. Again, it's going to bring bring back this in, this this entire data vault model here. It's actually going to look a little bit better if I take the columns off here and just do the refresh again. So what you'll see here is I'll have this entire data vault model now that I can print out, review with my team, and, and do a whole bunch of work on. So this effectively is what I want to go and, and, and publish for, um, for the walkthrough. So all I need to do here is hit the publish button. And what it does here is it'll, if you, you can also obviously have multiple data vault projects um, to split that up into sm um, small swim lanes. But for now, we're just gonna keep the defaults here, hit the publish button, and you'll get a publish successful button. And if I now head over to the objects, you'll see that I now have all of my objects here, my hubs, my links, my satellites, all created for me as physical objects, which I can go and have a look at. And I can go in here and look at my customer key. I can go into this this link over here. I can look at that address SK there. I can see, okay, well, it's referencing the hub there. So all of that logic is there. I can always go back into the schema diagram here and either get a, a, a schema diagram of my um, my source system, or I can, you know, I can look at source system schema diagrams and do some schema modeling here, or I can look at my data vault model, just look at the hubs and links, and do refresh that and then actually get like what, what, what is called as a, a terrible backbone. You can just look at your hubs and your links together. You can add, as, add whatever you want here and then print this out and review that.